All right, David Kahn here with another question from topic 8.1. Uh, we're looking at uh, nuclear fission. We want to outline whether nuclear fission constitutes a renewable or non-renewable source of energy. Uh, I think we can all agree it is non-renewable. Uh, and the reason is uh, because no new fissile materials are arriving on Earth. or being produced on Earth. All of the fissile material that exists on Earth uh, has been here since the formation of the Earth. Um, so once we use what's here, we'll have to go elsewhere to get it. We'll have to go to Mars or something. Uh, mine asteroids, maybe. So it's non-renewable. It's not being reproduced here on Earth. State two advantages of nuclear fission over burning fossil fuels for the production of electrical energy. You know, lots of debate is there to be had about whether uh, fossil fuels or nuclear power are the way to go forward, or whether we should be going for uh, renewables. But if we're just looking at the advantages fission has over fossil fuels, uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, one of the big ones is that uh, there are no uh, greenhouse gas emissions in fission. Uh, of course, there is waste, um, and we have to deal with that waste, but none of it is greenhouse gases. Uh, speaking of the waste, uh, kind of an advantage about the waste is that only small amounts of waste are generated. Now, that waste, of course, is dangerous, and we need to handle it very carefully, but because it is such a small amount, uh, it's, we're, we're capable of attempting to control it, whereas the waste from uh, fossil fuels we just dump into the atmosphere and hope for the best. Um, other possible answers to that uh, probably exist as well, but I think those are two good ones. Uh, explain how a chain reaction maintains the production of energy in nuclear fission. Uh, so uh, in fission of uranium-235, the atom accepts a, a neutron, making it unstable, making it fissile. Uh, when it uh, fissions, it releases several new, or several more neutrons. Uh, if an average of one of those neutrons is absorbed by another uranium-235 atom, then the reaction can continue. Basically what we're saying here is that um, we want the production of energy to be self-sustaining. Every time one of the uranium-235 atoms undergoes fission, energy is released. But in order for it to undergo fission, we have to feed it that neutron. And that's an energy-intense process to make a neutron beam to send into the sample. So it'd be nice if it could do it on its own, and it can. Uh, because neutrons are both an input and an output of the reaction, we can use the output of one fission to kickstart the fission of the next reaction. If we get an average of one reaction per reaction, uh, then we get a constant, sort, a constant rate of fusion occurring and a constant amount of energy coming out. If we get more than that, that's kind of a problem. Uh, we'd have to slow that reaction down or uh, we run into things like meltdown situations. Uh, and if we get less than one reaction per reaction, then the whole reaction slows down and we need to get it going faster again. We control these reactions with uh, things called control rods, but that's, that's not what the question is asking. Uh, finally, we have part D. When a uranium nucleus undergoes fission, approximately 180 MeV of energy is released. There's that nasty unit for energy, MeV, not our friendly jewel. The overall efficiency of a nuclear reactor is 23%, and its output power is 450 megawatts. We want to calculate the number of fissions required 
uh, per second. So we're saying, how many reactions do we have to uh, have occur in order to get 450 megawatts of power out? That's 450, oopsie, 450 megajoules per second. So in one second, we need 450 megajoules of energy uh, coming out. So it's going to come from the energy of the individual fissions. So that energy is 180 MeV, which we want to convert to joules so we can get back into that SI system. So we'll multiply that by the conversion 1.6 times 10 to the negative 13. That's the conversion between MeV and joules. Uh, running that calculation, we get 2.88 times 10 to the negative 11 joules per fission. Now we want to determine how many of those do we need to make up 450 megajoules. So that's the number of fission reactions times the energy per reaction. Uh, gives us the total energy that we give up through fusion, or fission, excuse me. But we don't get to capture all of it. We only get to capture 23% of it. And altogether, that gives us 450 megajoules. Solving this for n, using n solve or your calculator or rearranging or whatever you like, we get that we need 6.79 times 10 to the 19th reactions, fissions, atoms. That sounds like a lot of atoms, and you know, it's a big number. Um, but because the atoms are very small, uh, this winds up being a fraction of a gram, a small fraction of a gram.